Also, the uh, Kim Mulkey article in the Washington Post, that came out, and you know she was labeling it a hit piece. She, got it, it drew, she was drawing our attention to it. And there was nothing in there where I went, oh, I didn't know that, except for being estranged from her family, which, okay, that has nothing to do with her as a head coach. How she treated some of her players at Baylor, that was not a surprise. I mean, she has a singular focus, and that is winning. She's no different than Bob Knight. So if we want to trumpet Bob Knight and, you know, recognize his greatness, Kim Mulkey is, you know, cut from the same cloth. Not all, all of her players, not all of his players liked him. And now Bob took matters into his own hands, literally, with one of his players, Neil Reed. But Kim Mulkey is tough. And, but you sign up to play for her. Players transferred in to play for her. She wants to win. You may not like it. But I don't look at her as a villain. And she just wins. That's what she's told to do, paid to do, expected to do. But I, I read the Washington Post piece and I went, okay. But she's the one that brought more attention to it, which made me think, wait, what is she hiding if she is so nervous about this? And they timed it out. I thought it was going to come out on Sunday, came out on Saturday. You want to time it so it's right before LSU's or, you know, game, and then all of a sudden they're talking about it afterwards. Well, she said she hadn't read it, and uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, this is what she does. She's tough. You know, Bill Belichick doesn't try to be your friend. I don't know if Kim Mulkey's trying to be your friend. She's trying to be, and, and I think, uh, you know, depending how long you played athletics, you do have coaches where that guy doesn't like you. You know he doesn't. But there is a respect, like Vince Lombardi. His players didn't like him. As one of his players, the famous quote, he treated us all the same, he treated us like dogs. As long as you're being fair to your players, then that's usually all you're asking for with a coach. Just be fair, be respectful. They play hard for her, and you had two of their best players who transferred in to play for her. It's not like you go, oh my gosh, I didn't know she was this way. Mike Krzyzewski, very demanding. Bill Belichick, very demanding. It goes along with the territory. It's hard to be and have sustainable greatness as a head coach without upsetting somebody. And yes, she had issues with some of her players, uh, sexuality, uh, social media. She uh, you know, sat down Angel Reese, her star player, for four games earlier this year. You know, she demands greatness out of you. And sometimes what happens is a coach will ask for you to clean up your flaws when they don't clean up their flaws. Bob Knight would always yell at his players, have composure. Bob Knight never had composure. But he was a great coach. So I read it. I didn't really see anything that I didn't know or that I went, boy, that raises a red flag. She's a great, great coach, plain and simple. L.A. Times wrote a column that was UCLA versus LSU, and the L.A. Times went back and cleaned it up a little bit because it's basically saying good versus evil, and that's not fair to LSU. If that's the effort you give me every single night and how you play and you're tough, you know, we talk about LSU like, oh, man, they're trash talkers. The biggest trash talker is Caitlin Clark. Like, let's be fair here. It's just... Angel Reese doing what she did at the end of the game bothered a lot of people. Okay, you're going to get that tonight. It's going to be Caitlin Clark probably putting her hand to her ear like, I can't hear you. Or maybe, can you see me? Okay, Angel Reese is going to have something to say as well. They're not going to be friends tonight, but they said they're not enemies. Tonight, you're opponents, and it'll be fun. And Kim Mulkey, she's going to be fired up as well. Guaranteed to be sparkling, maybe in a variety of ways there. So I look forward to it. The storylines for the women match up. You could not have scripted this. Well, they did script it. They, they were hoping you get to UConn, USC, LSU, and Iowa. This is a year in the making. We were worried that maybe you're going too early with Iowa and LSU meeting an Elite Eight instead of a Final Four or maybe the potential for a national title game. Make no mistake about it. USC is for real. Juju Watkins is the next star. 
And in four years from now, if she's still playing in college basketball, we might be talking about her in the way that we talk about Caitlin Clark. It's a different style. But Juju Watkins dominates. Paige Beckers, what a wonderful story to come back from two knee surgeries to play for the greatest women's coach of all time, one of the greatest coaches of all time. Uh, undermanned, not a deep roster, and here they are. Look forward to that as well. The storylines are wonderful, and they have the stage to themselves tonight. 